Hello, my name is Malcolm. I'm an astrologer here in Austin, Texas, and this is Free Astrology with Malcolm. Okay, this is the Houses part, video 7, for analysis of the horoscope of Jimi Hendrix. If you want to print out the information yourself, this is the information. Jimi Hendrix was born November 27th, 1942, 10.15 a.m. Pacific Western Time, Seattle, Washington. If you want the chart that I'm going to use, you can have to go to ashtarcommand.net, click on spiritual blogs on the toolbar, type in astrology, click the magnifying glass, look for my face, and I guess the word Jimmy, or Jimi Hendrix, whatever, and you can get the horoscope that I'm doing tonight. Another thing, uh, this is a very good book to read if you're interested in Jimi Hendrix. It's Jimi Hendrix, The Intimate Story of a Betrayed Musical Legend by Sharon Lawrence. I've read three books on Hendrix so far. I think this one's the best. It's about intimate details of his life. And let's start. Okay, we start out with the rising sign, Ascendant. Hendrix had Sagittarius rising as his Ascendant, which is the beginning of the first house. He did have, if you remember in a previous lecture, I talked about how the Ascendant can sometimes give the appearance of the individual. Well, remember I said Sagittarius can sometimes have deer-like eyes. That was definitely him. He had the deer-like eyes. He didn't have wide thighs or the wide torso that I've usually heard people with Sagittarius rising have, but he definitely had the eyes. And he has Jupiter ruling his first house, so we look at the position of Jupiter to see if it's afflicted or not. And it is afflicted. It's in a semi-square with Saturn, that's, and it's a pretty hard one, too. So, um, as far as his expression to others in the environment, he would probably have hard times with older people or people of authority, which is what Saturn can sometimes represent. So, um, he would travel would be very, very important to him, and also there would probably be some restrictions and limitations on that. I remember at one point I read where he missed a bus in St. Louis while on tour and he had to stop touring with them. Okay, we come to the second house. That's going to be ruled by Saturn and again, the second house is money and changes in financial situation and again we have the Jupiter picture thrown in but we also have uh, Venus thrown in because Saturn's in an opposition with Venus, and as I mentioned be before, Saturn and Venus together, that can indicate uh, artistic talent. So I think that's the artist, but with Jupiter and that picture for the second house, I would say it defines making his money in artistic ways, but not doing a very good job of management, which would be the, the semi-square between Saturn and Jupiter. Third house, House of Communications. He has that ruled by Neptune, which is in Pisces. Neptune, despite its semi-square with Mars, Neptune is in a good position because it has that trine with uh, Uranus. He was part of that generation born in that era that put out Lennon, John Lennon, McCartney, uh, Bruce Lee, and many important New Age thinkers came out of here who um, really changed a lot of uh, thinking and philosophy as far as art, music, and spirituality goes. But anyway, with, him, with Neptune ruling that, he's going to be, um, he's going to have communication abilities that are going to be quite different from anyone else because of Neptune. But then Neptune can deceive, and he also was a victim of a lot of fraud on paper, and he did a lot of poor contracts for himself that hurt him. For instance, he signed uh, he gave away his rights for the sum of one dollar so he could learn recording from someone. Okay, next we come to the fourth house. That's ruled by Mars. Mars is in a semi-square with Neptune. And again, that's sort of, uh, that's a real rough home life, I would think. And also, it would indicate, because Mars represents physical prowess and activity, he would um, probably be limited in those areas. And he reportedly did not like doing lawn work with his father. He thought it was too tiring, he wasn't paid or anything. So as far as the activities and stuff in, in the fourth house and working with the family and so forth, uh, there were probably some disappointments, I would think, in the fourth house. Also, because Neptune and Mars rules drugs or drug activity, it was probably maybe some alcoholism. His mother was reportedly, his original mother was reportedly an alcoholic. And um, so maybe some of that also. 
But as far as the turf underneath his feet, yeah, he probably had lots of drugs available with him all the time. He reportedly knew how to grow pot, and he, um, like the Beatles, they used a lot of um, amphetamines in their day to keep going from city to city. Um, so it, he could probably have, it could be a lot of intoxicants at the home, even when he was famous. Next we come to the fifth house. The fifth house is ruled by Venus, again, the artist complex of uh, Venus and Saturn. Hendrix's favorite um, leisure time activities involve the arts. He liked museums, he was on the front row at Buddy Guy concerts, he was in the front row of Cream concerts. So music and entertainment and artwork were his leisure and because Venus rules the fifth house and is in that artistic complex with Saturn, art, music was what he liked to do in his off time. Next we have the sixth house. That's ruled by Mercury. It has Saturn in it. And um, so again, we have the artistic complex coming into play here, except we got Mercury in opposition with Uranus. Mercury rules the sixth house, and because of its opposition uh, with Uranus, it is my opinion that I think it's, he's um, probably very, very critical with Saturn in the sixth house and Venus as artistic activities. And probably was presenting unusual forms of communication as a result of being critical with this artwork. That would be how I would interpret that. And, okay, I think that's it for now. We're going to continue the second half in the next video.